In Australia, it is clear that the Chinese Communist Party is working to covertly interfere with our media, our universities, and also influence our political processes and public debates. Last year, in response to a scandal over Chinese Communist Party influence in Australia, the federal government passed sweeping new laws banning foreign interference in Australian politics. We consider that the potential for foreign interference and foreign influence in our democratic system to be of such a high level of concern that it motivated us to totally redraft the laws so that we had the full suite of powers to police these real concerns. Despite this, there's evidence that covert Chinese Communist Party interference is continuing. Why are people afraid? Because of repercussions from the Chinese um, consulate or the Chinese government. We've had multiple briefings at the top secret level from ASIO and other agencies that foreign interference is being conducted in Australia at an unprecedented level. Tonight on Four Corners, new revelations about China's interference operations here in Australia and the efforts to influence our politicians. Chinese New Year in Sydney South. It's an event as important to campaigning politicians as it is to many locals. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so proud to be here in Hurstville to bring in the Lunar New Year. And I can't think of a better way to kick off this year's celebrations than be here with thousands of people uh, lining the streets, enjoying this wonderful celebration. Around half the people living in this area have Chinese heritage. <laughs> Among them is Marie Ma. Ma manages Chinese language newspaper, the Vision China Times, which sought to sponsor the New Year's event. Being a, a sponsor for a council that has the largest Chinese population and the largest group of our readers um, actually lives within this council um, is actually very important to us and for us to connect with our readers and or for us to reach, um, uh, build that bridge between our local um, community and the Australian mainstream society. Marie Ma says the Chinese government is seeking to control the news that Chinese Australians can read and listen to. What is the purpose of that control? Well, I guess to, um, to control what people say about the government and um, how much the Chinese community know about the truth, about um, issues and things that are going on. Well, for the Chinese Communist Party, they're really keen on this sort of narrative control. Uh, the story of China is the story that they themselves want to define and want to tell. And anyone who sort of uh, departs from the official version of, of, of China's story, uh, that's not something that they want to hear. So uh, other views are not welcome. Marie Ma's paper refuses to take orders from Chinese government censors. We are truly servicing the Chinese community here so they can actually get an understanding of what is really going on. There are some Chinese language media who try to be, um, try to be independent as well um, in the reporting, but there is always a red line that everyone's actually quite afraid of crossing. Why are people afraid? Uh, because of repercussions from the Chinese um, consulate or, Chin or the Chinese government. Marie Ma's newspaper is read by Chinese Australians across the nation and publishes stories critical of the Chinese Communist Party. Because of this, it's been targeted again and again. Vision Times advertisers based in China have been visited by Chinese intelligence officers from the Ministry of State Security, warning them to pull their ads. 
they were annoyed. Actually, they were very annoyed, um, but uh, because they want to have the ad with us, um, because it's generating income for them. Uh, however, um, because of the disturbances that they're receiving um, in their day-to-day -day operations from these uh, visits from the Ministry of State Security, um, they had to just pull the ad. In Australia, Chinese government officials have waged an extraordinary campaign to hurt the Vision Times. Last year, after initially being accepted as a sponsor for the Chinese New Year Festival, the Vision Times was suddenly told by the Georges River Council its sponsorship was cancelled. We were slightly suspicious because we thought there could have been some pressures um, coming from um, the Chinese consulate. Four Corners has obtained an email sent by the Chinese consulate to the Georges River Council, warning it to black ban Marie Ma's paper. We have noticed that a politically anti-China media named Vision China Times has been listed as an event supporter. We have attached great importance to our cooperation with the George River City Council and hope there will be no change to the policy of George River City Council on supporting the development of Australia-China relationship. Why would the Chinese consulate be so upset about your newspaper sponsoring this local government event? Uh, because we are independent paper, it's a newspaper that they cannot control. And the Chinese consular do not like any media outlets that they, they cannot have some sort of control over. Worried her paper would again be blocked from participating in another New Year's festival, Marie Ma took her concerns directly to the Georges River Council. There has been some controversy around whether or not to approve our sponsorship this year. And there has also been an FOI lodged to look into circumstances surrounding the sudden cancellation of our sponsorship last year. Per the cancellation letter, the reason was due to council wanting to stay with existing media partners. However, since then, we have strong reasons to believe the real reason was due to interference from a foreign government. We are shocked and would like to seek a direct answer from the council whether that was the case. Marie Ma's demand to know if the Chinese government was interfering in the affairs of the council sparked a furious debate between councillors. I keep asking myself, and I can't find an answer, as to, you know, why was the decision made not to accept uh, Vision China Times sponsorship when they clearly controlled the Vision China Times and the Vision China Times Council? Let me ask a question before you answer. No, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, so, um, I mean, you know, putting aside perhaps potentially the most galling of claims is that there, there's potentially alleged foreign government, um, I guess, influence. But these assertions are based on no facts at all. Yeah. And um, Councillor Brackers is really, really overstepping the mark on this. And uh, I suggest you get your facts right. Because once again, you're wrong. We will soon find out, I suppose, if there's Absolutely. any communication between foreign government and, and our council. But I suppose that we'll, we'll find that out. <laughs> Mr Mayor, the Acting Director has advised me that we did receive an email from the Consul General uh, not last year, Councillor Hindi, it was in January this year, and that email uh, requested Council's consideration of uh, not accepting the sponsorship due to the Vision China Times being considered to be uh, politically anti-China. The information was relayed to the MEAC members at the time. Confidential council documents obtained by Four Corners reveal Chinese government officials pressuring the council to black ban the Vision Times, even after Marie Ma questioned the council about Beijing's interference. This morning I had a call from Mr Tony Wong, who works for the Chinese consul, to remind us that he would like to keep a friendly relationship between China and New South Wales. He wanted to make sure that there were no embarrassing situations this year and reiterate their position involving anti-China groups. 
Mr Tony Wong from the Chinese consulate phoned to remind council of the delicate issues around this anti-Chinese group. When the council refused to extend its ban on Marie Ma's newspaper, the Chinese consulate called again. I received a call from the office of the Chinese Consul General. The Chinese Consul General was disappointed that Georges River Council would include anti-Chinese political groups in the Lunar New Year event. As a consequence, the Chinese Consul General will not attend the event. Are you anti-China? No, um, we actually love China and that's the reason we are actually running this uh, media outlet. To, um, because we love China, we want the Chinese people here to actually know um, about the real news um, in China and also um, the actual, uh, actual views and real views of the Australian government here. There are several authoritarian states who are involved in foreign influence across the globe. But in Australia, the Chinese Communist Party is probably the most active, and China is seeking to influence our elites, particularly our political and business elites, in order to achieve their strategic objectives. While the Chinese government threatens those who don't tow the party line, those who do are rewarded. Much of Australia's Chinese language media market is heavily influenced by the Chinese government, thanks in no small part to this man, Melbourne millionaire Tommy Jung. Jung is a media mogul, financing movies, mixing with celebrities and golfing with politicians. Jiang owns Chinese language media outlets across Australia and the world. Tommy Jiang is a very important media proprietor in Australia. He controls, um, he owns most of the Chinese language radio platforms in Australia, in most capital cities. Uh, he's got other business interests, um, including in Australia and, 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 and China and, and globally. So he's a really important figure in Chinese media. Tommy Jiang is running an international network of radio stations which are running state-run Chinese propaganda into different countries around the world. Jiang's rise has been propelled by the Chinese government. He's a delegate to the China People's Political Consultative Conference, a platform of the Communist Party's United Front Work Department which engages in lobbying and influence work for Beijing. In 2009, Jiang formed an Australian media joint venture, Global CAMG, with a company controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. Essentially, Chinese language media platforms in Australia have been uh, co-opted largely uh, by the Chinese Communist Party. Um, they've been incentivised. They've, in some cases, they've been bought or entered into various licence arrangements and agreements. Uh, and on the other end of the spectrum, publishers uh, or independent voices who are prepared to have different views have um, been intimidated. Uh, their financial revenues have been squeezed. Advertisers have been threatened. So really, we're talking about a full ecosystem of incentives and disincentives which dry up the space for independent voices and reward people who are prepared to toe the line from Beijing. A dinner party at a restaurant in suburban Melbourne, where the guest of honour is radio host Xiaolu. Xiao Lu was once a fixture on Tommy Jung's Melbourne radio station 3CW, but he's now off the airwaves. Xiao Lu is too scared to be interviewed by Four Corners to say why he's been taken off air. But his friend Dr Lu says Xiao Lu's Melbourne talkback program offended the Chinese government. I think he knew clearly he was monitored. 
he was somebody watching him. Yeah, he, I think he knew that very well. And how did that make him feel? Uh, make him put some restraints to himself. So when he choose topics, uh, when he takes calls from the listeners, may be careful. Four Corners has obtained directives to Shaolu from 3CW management, telling him not to let talkback callers say anything bad about the Chinese government, including President Xi Jinping's Belt and Road Infrastructure Program or the constitutional change making Xi president for life. Avoid discussing the change of constitution. As the One Belt, One Road Summit has begun, has to be positive. Be careful with the program. Try to stick to the topic. In July, Xiao Lu was told by 3CW his program needed to change. Tommy Jiang then called Xiao Lu, chastising him for allowing talkback callers to criticise the Chinese Communist Party. <laughs> Xiao Lu's program was cancelled. I was very surprised. Uh, the program was stopped, but I was very surprised. Uh, because it's very popular, I got so many listeners, uh, so many years, and uh, the program Xiao is so helpful to the community. Well, the thing about the Chinese Communist Party is that they're constantly worried about their legitimacy. Constantly. And as a result of that type of concern, one believes that the only way to maintain um, stability, in ma stability in one's society is not only through police and political action, but also by having people, if they don't agree with you, at least be silent. Tommy Jung's wealth and business ventures have allowed him access to the good and great of Australian politics. In 2013, Tommy Jung hosted a Chinese Business Awards Night, where then Prime Minister Kevin Rudd was a special guest, and guests donated $260,000 to the ALP. Jiang has organised fundraisers for both major parties, with few questions asked. When it comes to donations, particularly, politicians should be naturally circumspect about who they receive donations from, particularly if donors have connections to overseas, and particularly to foreign governments who are seeking to influence our political processes. As well as his media interests, Tommy Jiang is overseeing the $100 million development of the Twin Creeks Golf Course in Outer Sydney. His fellow director in this venture is casino industry tycoon Jack Lamb, seen here at a golf club event. Jack Lamb is a member of three organisations involved in the Chinese Communist Party's United Front Overseas Influence Network. He's also a fugitive. In 2017, Lamb was charged with paying a $1.3 million bribe to senior immigration officials in the Philippines. Ipinag-utos na ni Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte ang pag-aresto sa big-time online gambling operator na si Jack Lam dahil lumano sa panunuhol at economic sabotage. After the Department of Justice issued a lookout order against a gambling tycoon, Gin Lokiam or also known as Jack Lam, the Bureau of Immigration gave out pictures of Jack Lam to all 700 immigration officers in the entire country. After fleeing the Philippines, Jack Lamb visited his Australian golf club, Twin Creeks. It was there in February 2018 that Lamb and fellow director Tommy Jung hosted a golf day. Their special guest was Tony Abbott, who as Prime Minister had been warned by ASIO about foreign influence and donations. 
A fortnight later, Tony Abbott was again hosted by Twin Creeks, this time for an event supporting his local Liberal Party branch. Mr Abbott told the fundraiser he was no friend of communism, while the Liberal Party later declared $40,000 in services donated by Twin Creeks. Look, I, if I was a politician, I wouldn't be taking money from uh, somebody who was involved in a foreign propaganda outlet, no. Why not? Uh, because there's at least the risk of um, the perception of conflict of interest of being, uh, being tainted. John Garneau was one of Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull's senior advisers on China. There's no doubt that the Chinese Communist Party has sought to use um, all sorts of vehicles to have non-transparent mechanisms, means of influencing politics in Australia and elsewhere. In Australia, it is clear that the Chinese Communist Party is working to covertly interfere with our media, our universities, and also influence our political processes and public debates. Andrew Hasty chaired the Parliamentary Joint Committee on Intelligence and Security that spent months analysing how the Chinese government was interfering in Australian politics. He helped push through sweeping new laws banning foreign interference. We've had multiple briefings at the top secret level from ASIO and other agencies that foreign interference is being conducted in Australia at an unprecedented level. We heard from the head of ASIO say that on the public record, espionage and foreign interference is being conducted in Australia on unprecedented levels. We have to take that seriously. We consider that the potential for foreign interference and foreign influence in our democratic system to be of such a high level of concern that it motivated us to totally redraft the laws so that we had the full suite of powers to police these real concerns. Australia's new counter-foreign interference regime was introduced after Four Corners exposed the activities of this man, billionaire property developer Huang Xiangmo. ABC Four Corners, we'd like to ask you about your relationship to the Chinese Communist Party. Is the Chinese Communist Party directing you to donate to Australian political parties? No, no. 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 Huang arrived in Australia from China in 2011. His Australian companies have donated millions of dollars to charity and political parties. Let's not pussyfoot around here. Huang Zhangmo was a seriously influential person in the Sydney Chinese community and also in the broader Australian political makeup. This is one of, if not the largest political donor to the major parties. In 2015, spy agency ASIO warned Labor and the Liberals that Huang posed a risk of engaging in foreign interference on behalf of Beijing. There is a lot of well-documented evidence, to use your word, of Huang Xiangmo's umbilical connection to uh, political organisations which were guided, if not controlled, by Beijing. He was the president of the most important United Front work department platform in Australia. Huang's donations gave him extraordinary access to senior politicians. How about we thank Mr Huang with three cheers for his generosity today. Hibbit. 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 Well, it tells us how cheap our political systems are. I mean, it's extraordinary that nobody did any due diligence, any serious background checks for so long. Uh, in fact, uh, it was a case also, you know, people weren't even reading the newspaper. Um, so political systems and parties just took what they could for as long as they could get away with it. And the danger was that th they were becoming financially dependent on um, a foreign political system. And that is a precarious place to be. 
Within Labor, then Senator Sam Dastyari was among Huang's closest political allies. His dealings with Huang forced him to resign. I've been very upfront and honest. I was too close to the big donors like Huang Zhangmo. I paid a very, very high price for that. I resigned from parliament because that was the most appropriate thing that I could do. My prediction is that there will be a lot more that comes out in relation to Mr Dastyari. He's a shady figure. Uh, if he's a double agent, he shouldn't be in the Australian Senate. And Mr Shorten ultimately needs to show the leadership uh, to sack Mr Dastyari and to send a very clear message to the rest of the Labor Party who's involved in this sort of behaviour that it's unacceptable. The story of Huang's connections does not end there. We have obtained new information about how Huang sought and gained access to politicians, including senior ministers. This information has remained hidden from public view for years, despite the intense scrutiny on Huang. The revelations come as insiders from both major parties tell Four Corners privately their concern the full and continuing story of Beijing's meddling in Australia is not being told. In late 2014, while trying to expedite citizenship for his family, Huang sought a political favour, a private citizenship ceremony. So this was one of the strangest interactions that I ever had with Huang Zhangmo. And that was that his family and his children had been approved already to become Australian citizens. But it's actually a long process. He wanted the ceremony brought forward for his wife and children. Dastyari passed on Huang's request to then Immigration Minister Peter Dutton. I put a request in on New Year's Eve, because I work throughout the year, on New Year's Eve, end of 2014, start of 2015. Two weeks later, in mid-January, it was approved by Pete Nutton. That blew me away. It blew me away because look, ministers take months, months for these kinds of approvals. Peter Dutton might say, well, the only reason I, Peter Dutton, approved this was because Sam Dastyari asked me in writing. I took him on good, good faith. Is that not a fair response? I am not the Minister for Immigration. Right? I mean, if Peter Dutton's explanation for doing things is because Sam Dastyari asked him to do it, that is, that is ludicrous. Huang's family's private citizenship ceremony was held inside Dastyari's office. Peter Dutton has called you a double agent. Isn't this a bit of payback from you? Look, what Peter Dutton wants to call me is, is, is a matter for Peter Dutton. I mean, look, IFA, uh, politics is a, there's a lot of rough and tumble in politics, uh, and I, I've, I've punched and I've taken punches, and I accept that's part of the territory. By the time Huang moved to apply for his own citizenship in late 2015, he was being investigated by ASIO, which was worried about his access to Australian politicians. He did have a lot of access. Um, he was photographed with a lot of senior figures. So undeniably, he had a lot of influence. And, um, you know, you can make the connection between his donations and that influence. <laughs> Huang turned to another political contact, Santo Santoro, a former minister in the Howard government turned lobbyist. Santoro's business involves providing access to politicians. Four Corners has obtained a confidential record of a meeting in which he boasted about his direct line to Peter Dutton. One of my best friends is Peter Dutton. He is the most honest politician you ever But he tries to be helpful. Like if there is, you know, a capability or a critical mass of investment that comes into Australia, that can come into Australia, he will try to help. Santoro tells his clients he can help with attempts to expedite immigration applications. There is nobody on Australia who's got a place for me to help you with this particular part of the project. Nobody. I can go to somebody in the minister's office and say, can you have a close look at this? 
Santoro charges at least $20,000 to access Peter Dutton's office. If I'm going to be doing the work, I'm going to go to Canberra you know, with a copy of the visa application and hand it over to somebody and say, can you help? No, no, I want to get paid and pay that front. In 2016, as Huang became increasingly anxious about securing his own citizenship, he put Santoro on a retainer. Santoro delivered, arranging a lunch between Huang, Peter Dutton and the minister's senior staffer in a private room at Master Ken's restaurant in Sydney's Chinatown. This gave Huang direct access to the man most citizenship applicants could only dream of meeting to push their case. Santoro told Four Corners his work with Huang was limited to providing introductory services. Both Huang and Santoro deny their arrangement was aimed at getting Huang citizenship. Peter Dutton confirmed the lunch, but denied he'd assisted Huang. Australia has shut the door on one of China's wealthiest and most prominent businessmen. Huang's attempt to get a passport failed based on advice from ASIO. He posed the risk of foreign interference. And last November, he was banned from re-entering Australia. They're sensitive matters and the government has always been, has always acted consistent with the advice that we've received. And that's what has happened on this occasion. Well, we've heard from our security agencies that espionage and foreign interference in Australia is being conducted at unprecedented levels. So Mr Huang being denied citizenship is very significant because it shows that this government is prepared uh, to use the powers at their disposal to protect our sovereignty and our democracy. Given that there are very strict new laws requiring relationships to be transparent, um, as we move into the future, if people were uh, acting, trying to influence a government outcome, and they were doing that uh, being paid for or engaged by a foreign principal, then uh, as of the institution of this legislation, i.e. now, that relationship would have to be documented and knowable to the Australian people. In New Zealand, academic Anne-Marie Brady has been investigating how the Chinese Communist Party interferes in political systems overseas. In 2017, she released an explosive report exposing allegations of Chinese government interference in New Zealand politics. It's, um, some have described as like a bombshell, and uh, it's... Had the, the significance gone well beyond New Zealand. In my paper, I found uh, that there had been uh, there was substantial donations, particularly to the the New Zealand National Party, but Labour also and the Māori Party, of figures who I were able to identify as being very closely affiliated with the Chinese Communist Party's United Front work activities. I have known Anne-Marie Brady for over, for nearly 30 years now, and I, I worked with her closely um, on her PhD thesis. I think she's a very calm and collected academic, very focused, very stern and serious academic. She's principled and outspoken, and that in any environment can cause people to feel irritated. The day before she was due to give evidence before Australia's parliament about her report, her home and office were burgled. There were many indications um, that uh, from the start, look, from the, what was taken and what was left behind, that make it look like it was not your normal burglary, for example, targeting of a broken laptop of no value to anybody, unless you want to know who my contacts are or get other evidence of my laptop taking a burner phone that I'd last taken to China, but not taking cash, not taking other valuables um, that are of great resaleable value. Uh, that's unusual. We were very disturbed. We had an esteemed academic from New Zealand telling us that she'd had her 
uh, home broken into, her laptops taken from her, and she was suggesting foreign interference. We took it very seriously. Government sources have confirmed to Four Corners that intelligence assessments identified China's spy service, the Ministry of State Security, as the prime suspect behind the intimidation of Brady. Just after she was called before the Australian Parliament, Chinese intelligence agents interrogated her academic collaborators in China about her testimony, which had been published on the parliamentary Hansard record. There was a visit to the university who had hosted me in November 2017, also from Ministry of State Security, um, and very upset that I'd spoken to Hansard about that evidence. So all these kind of factors told me that I was of interest to the Ministry of State Security in China. China's spy agency has been active in Australia as well. Former Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull's senior China advisor, John Garneau, is a former journalist who spent six years in Beijing. In 2016, Malcolm Turnbull directed Garneau to partner with spy agency ASIO on a top secret report about the Chinese government's interference campaign in Australia. You did a classified report with ASIO for the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet about Beijing's interference in this country. What did that report find? Uh, I have been involved in a classified project and I clearly can't talk about the contents of that project. Garneau's work with ASIO appears to have been of intense interest to Beijing. In early 2017, China expert and Sydney academic Dr Feng Chongyi came to the attention of the Chinese authorities over his friendship with Garneau. On a trip to China, Dr Feng was detained for several days and interrogated by Chinese intelligence officials. For the first time, he's willing to reveal the details of that interrogation. I, I would say they focus very much on, on John Garneau. Uh, on John Garneau. I, John Garneau, I, I happen to uh, be a good friend of him. And actually, we spent a whole day more than one day on him in every detail, what we met, what kind of things we talked about, what, what, what kind of contact we have together, and all that in, in every detail. What did they want to know about John Garner? He knows his position, his position in government, what exactly he's doing, um, what, what he was doing in China and what he's, he has been doing back in Australia is in very detail whatsoever. Did they know John Garneau was working for Malcolm Turnbull? Yes, they, they actually they knew a lot about him. Uh, actually, during the, the, the uh, uh, interrogation, they did not hide their angry with him. Look, leaving aside the work that I was doing, the fact that an Australian resident who is an important part of the national debate here could be detained without any legal process in a hotel room in Guangzhou for the best part of a week uh, shows a certain disregard or disparagement for um, our ability to defend the rights of our own citizens and our residents. And, and question about you, the Prime Minister's advisor. Uh, well, that seems to add an extra layer of contempt. In March last year, another of Garneau's Chinese contacts was quizzed. Australian writer Yang Hengjun was en route to a meeting with Garneau in central Sydney when he was unexpectedly diverted. We're going to meet at four. He arrived closer to five and he apologised because he said he'd been intercepted on the way, he'd been called by a Chinese official. A Chinese official? A Chinese official, yeah. He was asked about me, what's, what was the nature of our relationship, um, what was I doing, what was I working on? After this, Garneau warned Young not to travel to China. Garneau was worried that Young might be arrested due to their relationship and felt Young was especially exposed as a former security service employee 
who had become a critic of the Communist Party. This is the, you know, the most powerful story of all, is the insider who came to know too much and tells his story outside. Um, uh, certainly in my experience, my most important teachers and sources were insiders in the Chinese system who were prepared to, to talk about it and explain how it works. Young ignored Garneau's advice and in January flew to China with his wife, Xiao Liang, and her 14-year-old daughter. When Young arrived, Chinese officials were waiting. Lao 我们两个就我们三个人被分开了。我跟女儿一辆车，她自己一辆车，我们就被分开，自那以后再也没见过。Now in Shanghai, Xiao Liang is still waiting for news of her husband. She hasn't been allowed to see him since he's been detained. Until now, she's never spoken publicly. It is extremely perilous to do so in China. My 然后也没有办法去帮他在法律的这个轨道上来往前推进，所以我现在真的是完全就很崩溃的状态。我只希望他能平安回来。Young has not been formally charged, but he's been accused of endangering state security. He's been detained for three months and has not been allowed to see a lawyer. I think it's quite standard for people in these situations to be kept awake for for days and nights on end as a way of breaking down mental defences and inducing really what can be a form of madness for some people. Um, uh, it's, it's normal to be um, fed disinformation about what your friends are saying, what foreign governments are saying, what your own government is saying. Um, so they will be uh, potentially trying to destabilise um, uh, Dr Young and that uh, I find that a very disturbing idea. Xiao Liang says she has been banned from leaving China. She's calling on the Australian government to fight harder for the release of her husband. I 在另外一个国家的，至少是最基本的人权的一些一些状况的一些去关怀吧。但是我觉得现在，我我说实话，我挺失望的。我希望这个澳大利亚政府能能至少有一些最基本的关怀。Mr. Young is an Australian citizen. He enjoys the rights and responsibilities of Australian citizenship, and so his detention, in a sense, is a detention of us all. We're all Australian citizens. How could we guarantee that we wouldn't be detained uh, if we went to China? I would like to see the government do more. I'd like to see the government do more behind closed doors. And I'd like to, um, at the very least, see some really strong statements about what this is uh, and why 
the importance of Young uh, to Australian, the Australian community, Australian society. Detaining Young in China has silenced him and his blog. Whether that was the aim is unclear. But the Chinese Communist Party is running a campaign here in Australia to silence others, seemingly unperturbed by new laws aimed at stopping this very behaviour.